Welcome to the Women Changing the World podcast, a podcast on a mission to bring you some of the most amazing women I know who are doing incredible things to generally make the world a better place. From corporate sustainability to straight up magic and everything in between, you'll meet the real life humans who are birthing the new. I'm your host, Liz Best, and I'm here to amplify the stories and voices of women who are changing the world. Welcome to another new episode of the Women Changing the World podcast. For today's episode, we're doing something a little bit different in honor of the one-year anniversary of the Women Changing the World podcast. Uh, You may have noticed, if you've been listening for a while, that one of my favorite questions to ask most of my guests is what advice they wish they could give to their younger selves. Um, I just, I love this question. I love the answers that we've gotten so much. Um, And so we wanted to create a special compilation episode with all of the answers that we've gotten to this question to date. Um, So without further ado, uh, give this a listen if you are looking for some brilliant wisdom from women changing the world, things that they wish that they could tell their younger selves today. always such a good question because I, you know, you start bouncing around to your younger selves and all these other lovely versions of yourself that have come before. And I'm like, Oh, what would I tell her? Oh, Oh, what about that one? Um, (laughs) So mine is usually wrapped up in like, I feel like there was a rush because maybe I had caught the idea from my parents at a young age. My parents have been together since they were like 14 So God bless them. Like it's a beautiful relationship. It does not happen for everyone. It doesn't happen for most people. Um, But when you grow up with that, you just kind of like, oh yeah, like you just get married to someone you met in high school or at the very latest college, right? Like this was the storyline I had in my head without really knowing that. And so I'd probably tell my younger self to like chill the heck out. You are going to find your husband when you're however old I was. So just like respect your body and your choices and relationships, just enjoy, enjoy it for now and like live into who you are so that when you do find your husband, you feel like the most proud of what you're bringing into that relationship. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is this, I don't know, however many year rendezvous I had pre Saturn return where I was basically from 18 to maybe 25, during that period of time in my life, I was really, I would, I don't wanna say misguided, but I was really fiercely and wildly independent in a way that really closed me off from love, um, from the possibility of deeper connections, and quite frankly, a little bit cut off from the collective consciousness I really wasn't able to tap in as much. And so I think for me, the advice that I would give to my younger self during that time would be to let people in. And the advice that I would give to my younger self, that I would give to anyone and even still give to myself this day is to really remember that we are we can't do this alone. We're nothing without each other and other people are our greatest resource. Don't listen to those that don't want you to succeed. And that you're going to and that you're going to be okay. I'm underlining that in my brain right now. Uh, I love it. Yeah, I think that that I would love. Uh, I keep um, I keep a picture of my first my uh, first school picture when I was in kindergarten on my fridge, um, as a reminder of like that version of Maya and like this like. I, that same version is inside of my my heart and my soul right now, but like that I I like to talk to her 
in an encouraging way that's like, you're going to be okay. You're awesome. Just lean into what feels great and good and you're going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually recently looking at a picture of me when I was, I think, 15 or 16. And it was a tragic picture of my awkward stage. <laughs> it's just a, a reminder of like, oh man, I, <laughs> I was uh, struggling at that point. Um, I think as any, you know, teenager at 15 or 16, I think most people, most of uh, teenagers feel like, what am I doing? What's going on with my body? What's going on with my life? And so I think I look, I looked at that picture um, and think about this question. And I, I think to my, my 15 or 16 year old self, I would say that um, your love for people is powerful um, and it, it will be the driving force of your life and your career. Um, but also that nothing is worth, worth sacrificing your, your physical health, your spiritual health, your mental health. Um, and that the most important thing is to invest in these to keep you from burning out. Um, and to invest in yourself and in your relationships, um, because that will, that will, that's what will keep you going and keep you healthy. Um, your career can be important to you, but it can't be over all of those other things or else you're, you're really going to burn out. Get off social media, which is all oh, like, frankly, what I would have told myself yesterday. <laughs> so, like, I don't know, like any age, it's still really difficult. Like, maybe the platform changes now. It's like get off LinkedIn, whereas before it was good, get off Facebook. Or, <laughs> um, but you know, it, I think it's so easy, especially when you're younger, to be caught up in a comparison trap. And um, yeah, I think it's uh, it just is such an energy suck. <laughs> um and and so just yeah uh yeah time consuming frankly so um yeah I think that's what I'd say get, get off social media that's such a great question I think I would speak to my early 20s self and I would tell her what you want is good because oh, I'm going to cry saying this because this happens for a lot of women, but being in controlling relationship dynamics, um, even just society as a whole really limits what we can want and points us to wanting this body, this appearance um, and setting our priorities in an order that are not internally guided. And what I wanted, what I always wanted was um, to be fully expressed in myself, to be seen and heard and loved in the fullness of who I was, to make art with my life, to explore consciousness right? And even the sex and the drugs were part of that, were part of just wanting to explore the depths of consciousness, the light and the dark as we label them. And I had so much guilt and shame and judgment around just wanting what I wanted in life and feeling like I, I needed to want uh, the career path that society says to have, or I needed to want you know, even the money was like such a product of conditioning and it's okay if it's not for you, like if you just want the money, but I would tell her what you want is good and listen to that inner voice of desire and pleasure that is guiding you and the, the felt sense of knowing uh, instead of the chatter of the mind and follow what you want because it's not going to lead you astray. I would like to tell my younger self, just start the things that are on your heart and stop worrying about being good enough because progress and action will take care of that. You don't have to wait to be perfect. Just start. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so when I was 
I was what age was I when I graduated? 21. When I graduated from college, my first job, I was an administrative assistant at Sesame Workshop. One of my first, so I was doing all, I was scheduling calendars. I was doing all of that stuff for about a year. Um, one of my first mentors, someone who trained me, who's still a really good friend of mine, told me, she was training me and like, you know, when you have to go up to HR to get paperwork, you have to go get payroll, whatever, whatever all my tasks were across the company. She told me you have to kill them with kindness. She said, you attract more bees with honey. Like you have to just be, and, and it's not a, any different than how I would have operated, but it really stuck with me. Um, and I think for a lot of my early career, I just took the especially at that company, I took the road of, um, I don't know what the right like adjective is, but I, I was very eager to please or kind of trying to make everybody happy. Um, and I think that's also like a gender and cultural thing that I've carried with me. But I remember that piece of feedback reminded me like, all right, if I want to get things done, I just need to be like as nice as possible. And I need to like, even if people are being unreasonable with me or mean or abusive or whatever, I need to be just the nicest person. I need to get it done. And if I go back and, and add something to that, because I don't disagree that, you know, you, you, what is the saying? Like catch more flies with you catch <laughs> yeah catch more flies with honey I think yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah um if I could add to that I would just add that also n know and demand your worth so understand like what it is that you're bringing to the table and state that and then make sure that you're um being treated in a way that is fair and that you're being it applies to everything, right? Like compensation, like people respecting your time, people um, giving you opportunities and all of those things. And so I, I wish I could add that and, and that just some things are worth losing. You don't have to mm. win all the things. As I said before, I don't know if I said it in our conversation or on the recording, but um, I have a hard time saying no. <laughs> so it's something I'm still struggling with. But if I could add back to my 21 year old self, like some things are worth losing and that's okay. And you move on and there are better things that are coming. Yeah, that's a great question. And I think maybe I've touched on it a little bit, but I think I would give advice to my, you know, myself in my twenties to, to be at peace and that my life um, is exciting and my, my dreams are great and that my life will be really good. Even if it's not uh, in the same form that you, I imagined. I think that, I don't know, this is a really tough one for me for some reason. Um, I think that just having kind of, no, you know what, I think there have been a lot of moments where I'm like, what am I doing this, you know, job? Like, am I really like getting towards my goal, like working in sustainability or like, what's the point of this? You just kind of get so frustrated and hung up that you're not doing what you want to be doing. And it's all a step in the right direction. I always give this advice to people looking for jobs is like, your next job isn't your last job. It's a stepping stone. So what can you learn? So I think I would tell myself, like, you're on the right path. Just keep going. Have faith in your convictions. And it's all all the time. All the hard work is worth it. Just kind of have faith that, like, every minute doesn't have to be kind of, like, exactly aligned. Um, you're moving in the right direction. So, mm. you know, the Finding Nemo thing. Just keep swimming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to put it in age because, you know, that realization could come to anyone at any point. But, but um the two things I guess I would tell my younger self is one to take risks. Um, it's so important to get out of your comfort zone to, to really be able to, you know, um, accelerate your learning journey on, on anything that you want to learn. And I, I found that through that internship that I talked about at the start of this interview, uh, but also in, in different work circumstances, like I took the, the, less traveled path sometimes um, just to challenge myself uh, and, and take those risks and, and uh, you know, follow my heart in order to, to really learn. And I, I've experienced that those opportunities have allowed me to learn the most. And so I would say, take more risks. Um, you may fail and, and it's, it's totally fine because even failure, and I would say failure gives you more learning than, than your successes. But it's so important to take risks and get out of your comfort zone uh, to do what you think is best. 
Um, and then the second is really believing in myself. I, I I feel like for the most part of my life, I've I've been rather underconfident in what I can achieve as an individual. You know, um, I've al- almost had that imposter syndrome that I think a lot of women do have. Now that I think about it, um, and I and I think it's important to know that not that nobody's got the right answer nobody's got the right perspective and that you need to believe in yourself and then you know give it your all um to succeed and so i i would tell my younger self to to really believe in those moments when you think you're like no i i don't think i have it or i don't think i've got it in me to be able to do this it's just that's the inspiration we need we need to believe in ourselves and you know get along with that imposter syndrome and say it doesn't matter fake it till you make it <laughs> um but that's the the advice I would, those are the two pieces of advice I would give my younger self as I look back into my life focus on the stories mm. um I think stories force you to reflect um and that forces you in a weird way to like live in the moment as well so I would say just Focus on the stories. Life is a collection (laughs) of stories. And you should feel like you've got a lot of good stuff, a lot of good material that you could actually talk about. Mm. Um, So permission to to just reflect, permission to be yourself um, and feel like that's okay. Um, I wish I could tell my younger self that (laughs) because maybe she would have written down some stories. <laughs> I feel like this applies from birth till maybe just a few years ago. But the advice would be to um, be more comfortable being yourself and owning your different. Mm. And so being like half German, half Chinese, growing up in Germany, then moving around a lot. And just, I feel like being, I mean, all of us probably are different than whatever mainstream is, right? Like, but I used to be a very shy child. I used to be very self-conscious. But the moment I took what made me different and embraced it, those things became my superpowers. And I wish I'd done it sooner. It would have been better for my trajectory, but also just happiness and overall mental health. I think, I mean, maybe I got this advice before, but I was thinking about this as well. And like, I think it's adulting is hard. And I wish someone had told me to just like really enjoy my youth more and like, recognize that I had my whole life to work and create impact and that like it didn't have to happen overnight um because I feel like that like and and I think it's capitalism in in part responsible for this but like this this hustle of my my 20s was very I feel like toxic (laughs) um but even in high school I wanted to have a job and like work and you know check off accomplishments I did my associate's degree in high school um, one for more freedom, but also I was like, oh, I can get two years of college done in high school. Like I just constantly wanted to grow up faster. And I feel like I just wish someone had said like, just enjoy your youth <laughs> and, and like embrace where you are now, because like, it's not, you don't have to do it all overnight. I think advice that I would get, give to my, like a little desperate uh, me after graduating from school and looking for jobs like you'll find something great eventually and it might not be what you think it is but just you know <laughs> have some faith oh it's such a good question um I think I would probably pick I went to high school I don't know why I just went to high school <laughs> and I loved I loved high school by the way but I think I would tell her stumble a little bit more like be okay with that um, I was such a perfectionist and it carry, it's still something I'm battling constantly, but it really kind of formed in those early years. So I think I'd say like, don't study for the test. <laughs> like, it's okay <laughs> if you don't get a good grade or like show up late to dance team practice. Like all of these little things that I think could have just softened me a little bit back then um, because it is okay to be five minutes late. Like the world is not going to end. <laughs> so I think I would have softened those areas a little bit. There's so many things I could say, but I think one thing that really stands out is just learning, learn to trust yourself and believe in yourself. Um, Because at the end of the day, I've like realized whether I was an employee 
or whether I'm an entrepreneur, like the most important thing is how much I trust myself and bet on myself. Because if I can't trust myself or can't bet on myself, I can't expect expect anyone else to. Mm. Um, And so that sort of serves as like, that's the bottom line. (laughs) Um, And I think, you know, where I have experienced challenges over the course of my career is when I didn't trust myself enough. Even just five years ago and something I'm still working on um, is let it go. (laughs) I have always had kind of the churning voice in the back of my mind of, oh, if I had known this, I would have done that differently. Or, uh, gosh, you really messed that up. You know, I can't believe you said the wrong name in that call or, um, you know, oh, how, how could you have forgotten? It was so-and-so's birthday. Like, come on. <laughs> the and, <horror>. um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. And, you know, you have to learn to let some of it go. You have to be gentler and kinder on yourself than the world is on you because what you're doing is really really hard and you have to be able to bounce back and to do that it means you need to let go (laughs) what you were knocked down by um so I wouldn't say that I'm great at it still but I wish I could go back to you know five or ten years early 20s Michelle and tell her like you're gonna have to figure out how to let go faster because it's gonna hurt the longer you hold on to it Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Women Changing the World podcast. Please rate and review the Women Changing the World podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Google Podcasts, and don't forget to subscribe for future episodes. You can find me on Instagram. My handle is liz.best, that's L-I-S dot B-E-S-T, or you can find me on LinkedIn by searching my name, Liz Best. Join my mail list by visiting elizabethbest.com slash monthly meditation, and you'll receive all the latest updates on events, retreats, and opportunities to work with me, plus a monthly love note from my heart to your inbox. I am so excited to keep in touch, and I'll see you in the next episode.